What's up, sisters and friends? Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you're having a great start to your week, but we're about to make it so much better because I have someone in the house today on the couch that I know you guys already love. And if you don't love her, that means you don't know her because if you know her, you're gonna love her. I have Emma McDaniel, formerly known as Emma Jenkins, on the podcast today. And she is actually here. She flew here to be here with us. So thanks for flying here, Emma. Yes, it was a joy. It was a journey. I got to meet people in the airport, and I'm so glad to be Some delays, huh? Yeah, I I made a friend, and he knew (laughs) Jesus, and I'm so glad that I had a little extra time because I may not have met him. That's awesome. See, (laughs) this is the perspective my husband needs. Um, I hope he's listening to this podcast that when you get a delay, you never know who you're going to meet. You don't. You got to look for those opportunities. (laughs) Yes. Christian's like, no, this is just, no, we, we should not be in the airport right now I'm that's like, how my husband is too though eyes he's to mr see. efficient i to see he's oh. like quickest and i'm like wait but there's somebody there at the cash register that we can stand <laughs> in line just a couple more minutes and talk with them <laughs> that's awesome yeah me and christian yeah. are the same way which hey i gotta appreciate that too because he actually gets us there on time and yep. to where we're going and if it was mm-hmm. up to me i'd probably miss a lot more flights so <laughs> all right, I'll, we'll, we'll find some balance in the middle yeah um and you just announced on instagram that y'all are expecting yes we we are and are just over the moon. That's we are awesome. so honored and grateful and wildly amazed that wow. this is what we're stepping into. Yeah. We're so excited. And now to freely talk about it is really yes, happy you too. It's a secret for a little while because you waited till yeah. you were in your second trimester to announce, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's hard to keep that secret because it's the only thing you can think about and it mm-hmm. like feels super obvious to you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know if you feel like, I remember like before I told people, I'd be like, it's so obvious. Like they have to know. Like I said one thing, mm-hmm. like when I was FaceTime with my mom, it was the night I found out I was pregnant and I literally lived five Five minutes for my mom so I <laughs> definitely should have waited to tell my mom whenever I saw her the next day but I'm facetiming her and I said something and it wasn't even like a giveaway at all I was just like said something and then I was like you know I was like you know I was like I'm pregnant and she was like what no I don't I didn't even think about that and I was like oh I'm pregnant and she was like what and you're telling me on FaceTime but I live five minutes from you and I was like I thought it was obvious <laughs> that's so it true yeah, it's, it's like, like when it's at the forefront say. of your mind it's what you think is at the forefront of everyone's mind <laughs> it's so true I'm like I know you're thinking it she's like I wasn't thinking it <laughs> what are you it's talking so about so funny so okay yeah. speaking of just telling your family and stuff was it so fun to tell everybody it was so fun I was very similar to you in the sense that like I I wanted to tell my mom like automatically and we found out on December 23rd oh wow and so it was so hard though because we were like okay we have to wait till Christmas that would be the most ideal way to tell them but we went to a football game with my whole family which was like three hours away on that Saturday like so on Christmas Eve because Christmas was on a Sunday. And so we were with them like oh my six hours in the car for the whole football oh, game until like 10 that night. And it was really special though because it was just me and Josh who knew. So we would give mm-hmm. each other like special looks. Like we're the only people in the world who know. Oh, that's sweet. But we packaged up our pregnancy test and on Christmas Day, we oh, that's awesome. We gifted it to our families. So See, it was that's really the way special. You do it. That <laughs> is awesome. That's so special. I know I had all of these good ideas and then and had zero follow through. I had told Christian yeah. before we got pregnant, I was like, okay, whenever we get pregnant, we're not gonna tell anybody. Cause I was like, I want it to just be me and you that know, like that whole thing, like yeah. you just said, the sound is so beautiful. I was like, we are gonna like keep this a secret. And like literally we were on the phone with his parents and we hung up the phone and I was like, I'm gonna go take a pregnancy test. And it was late, which normally I would have waited until the morning, but I was just like so antsy. I said, I'm going to take a pregnancy test. So I went and as soon as it was positive, I was like, call your parents back. He was like, I thought we weren't going to tell anybody. I was like, forget the plan. So like, we called them. We called them all. I was like, who am I? I cannot keep a secret to save my life. But that's just so fun. It, and I'm glad so the world fun. knows and can celebrate with y'all now. And Me you too. don't know the gender at this point, but no. you have the information out there. You're just waiting. Yes, my doctor knows. Your doctor knows. Like Maybe by the time this podcast comes out, you will have announced it on Instagram. Yeah. 
That's so fun, Emma. I love it. Thank you. Well, I want to talk to you. So, you know, I, I told you how these podcasts kind of came about. The next few sisters and friends that we're about to do are topics that people send in on Instagram. Like, hey, can you talk about this? Mm-hmm. And um, I just kind of read the topics and thought about the people in my life who live that out so beautifully. And there is one about like keeping routines, like spiritual routines and habits. And I was like, man, Emma is so good at this. But I feel like the conversation goes so much bigger than just like routine yeah Um, it has to be really an overflow of who you are and when I think back to your life I mean I think back to whenever you were young and there's a specific moment I remember where you guys had moved a couple of times Mm y'all used to live here which is how we really got to know each other and then y'all moved to like Huntsville or Madison Alabama you moved to like Birmingham Hoover all over the place yeah and I don't remember when it was and I want you to talk to me a little bit about when and where this was but you came back one summer for camp and your joy was like radiant like it was so evident that everybody at church was talking about it i remember people were like have you seen emma jenkins like she's like so happy like her smile is like so big she's so happy she's like so joyful and i was like no and then i re- like i specifically remember this like it was yesterday at widesbury road church i like wow. saw you up at the front with your family because y'all sit like a little bit in front of us yeah. and you were smiling ear to ear worshiping and i don't know why it makes me teary because i, I just think it's really sweet that i really do remember that and be like whoa she is really joyful and then i started talking to you and i just remember thinking like what happened <laughs> like because it wasn't a normal yeah joy it was a a spiritual joy that i had not seen before i had not experienced before at that time of my life and i was so captivated by it and Mm -hmm. so take me back to that time do you remember an evident change in your life was that like a big moment for you and where and how did that all happen yeah so when I I remember that so specifically just that season because we did move we I remember started moving when I was nine years old. And so by the time I had come back to camp that summer, we had moved like three times in that period. And I remember I was 14 years old that year, or I guess turning 15, it was my eighth grade year of Mm -hmm. middle school. And a couple of months before camp and we came back to Louisiana, I was, it was like late February, early March. And I was honestly in like a really rough spot. Hmm. I was sitting on my bed, like a, like how you said there are moments in your life that you just remember so vividly. Yeah. And what I'm about to share, my dad like barely remembers, but it was one of the most pivotal moments wow. in my life, which I feel like is just a side note that like some things that we may see as, oh, like, did that even really have impact? Was that even really that weighty or significant actually could have great wow. impact in someone's life. And I think sometimes like the enemy would love to keep us from making the most of those little moments mm-hmm. because he wants us to think they're insignificant. Yeah. But it literally changed my life. Wow. So I'm sitting on my bed in such a rough place and I will explain why. I really did not understand what grace was. Hmm. So I loved life, loved people, loved my family, like went to church regularly, loved the Lord, but I really was so anxious and I was just so weighed down because I believed that I subconsciously, I really think, believed that I had to be perfect. So every time I noticed myself mess up, even to the detail of like having thoughts that was like, oh no, like that wasn't a good thought, which is you're basically holding yourself to a yeah. standard of not being human. Yeah. <laughs> and so anybody who's having that pressure mm-hmm. on themselves to live up to perfection is going to inevitably be exhausted and weighed down because mm-hmm. it's an unrealistic standard. And that's where I was at 14. Wow. And my dad walks in my room and the best way my 14 year old self could tell him what was going on, I tried to tell him and he pointed to my Bible on my bookshelf. He was like, Emma, when was the last time you just spent time alone with the Lord and His Word? Hmm. And I was like, I really thought about it because again, we regularly went to church. I love the Lord, but I was like, Dad, I don't know Hmm. the last time I just went to be alone with God and spent time in His Word. And he said, Emma, when Jesus comes back, I'm not going to be standing here with you holding your hand. It's just going to be you and Him. And He's either going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant or depart from me for I never knew you. Wow. And then my dad left the room. 
So I'm sitting there, and again, my dad doesn't remember this, but I'm telling you every detail of the story wow. because it was so significant to me. So I'm sitting there on my bed, and something that really hits me in that moment is like, he's not going to say, depart from me, for you never did everything perfectly. Depart yeah. from me, for you never kept every routine to the T. Mm -hmm. It was, you didn't have a relationship with me, Emma. You didn't know who I was. Wow. And so I went to my bookshelf, and I picked up a devotional book off my bookshelf, went to the introduction because I hadn't been reading it. So I was like, what even is in, a, yeah. in this devotional book? And the introduction was talking about the God girl. and said, the God girl is the girl who wakes up before the rest of the world does just to listen to what it is her father's wanting to tell her. Wow. And I like, it bubbles over within me and makes me emotional every time I talk about it because I remember so clearly telling the Lord, this is literally what I told him, I just want to know you. Like in that moment I sat mm -hmm. on my bed, I just want to know who you are. Mm -hmm. I want to make, want to know what makes you happy. I want to know what makes you sad. I want to know if you like chocolate too. <laughs> like I was really in this genuine childlike space wow. of like, I want to know who you are. Yeah. And so that happened in late February. I came there to back here to Monroe that summer. Mm -hmm. And it was during those months that I was in his word wow. every morning because I wanted to know who he was. I wanted to know who I was in him. And I say all of this because it's like, where did this joy come from? It, it literally says wow. in scripture that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Wow. It says the fruit of the spirit is joy. Mm. It says that he is joy, that his joy is strong. It yeah. brings us strength. And so I can't be walking in step with his spirit. I can't be genuinely seeking to know who he is and be filled with who he is and not have joy. And so wow. it's like you can't help but it be seen yeah. when it's really just who you're sitting with and who's wow. filling you. Wow. Okay, friends, let's take a minute and think about something. Imagine if you did not have access to a Bible or you weren't even allowed to have one. It's kind of hard for us to imagine because, you know, we've been so used to having access to it. But how would you look different if you didn't have your Bible? How would your family look different? How would your life look different? To me, everything would literally look different. Everything about my life would be different if I didn't have the Bible. And it's crazy to think about so many people around the world don't. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people around the world um, that this is their reality. They don't have bi a Bible or the access to get one. It's illegal where they live or they just don't have the funds for it. They have no Bible to read and they're probably feeling anxious, facing so many problems and just honestly could use the hope of Jesus Christ. Our amazing partners at Crew are tackling this problem head on. They have missionaries in nearly every country on earth. And because of their work, they're seeing so many people be led to Jesus, which means they're being, they're being led to hope. But many of them don't have a Bible in their own language, which is also a big problem. So here's where y'all can come into play. And here's where y'all can really help with this problem. For only $25 a month, you can provide three people with their own Bible each month. When you sign up to do that, Crew is also going to provide meals to 15 people in need through their aid ministry as a thank you for your support. You and crew can help feed bodies and souls, which those are the two things that we all need. So how awesome is that? When you sign up to help with crew, you're also going to receive a free copy of my devotional book, Live on Purpose. I love this book. I think it's going to be so helpful for you guys out there. It's a daily devotional book where you can just come into the confidence on why you are here, what your purpose is, and what God has for you as you get to know more about Him. I believe you will know more about you and what you're supposed to do in life. So I just want to say thank you so much to all the listeners who have already signed up to help crew this amazing ministry. Y'all are truly the best. And there is still a lot of work to do though. So we need some more of you guys to help out. Simply text WOA to 71326. That's W-H-O-A to 71326 to help today. Imagine just how much this gift could truly change someone's life and impact literally a whole nation. So text WOA to 71326 to help now or go to give.crew.org slash woe. Message and data rates may apply. Available to U.S. addresses only. That is like the most <clears throat> beautiful story. And um, like, I love that it wasn't just like, I love how you said it's not 
you kept my all the routine or you kept all of you know the commands or you did everything perfect but it was like I just want to know you and that is really why I said this is such a bigger conversation than a routine because Mm -hmm. you're if if you were who you are because of routine that would have died at 17 you know you maybe would have kept up with that for three years but Mm -hmm. I think the thing that is so amazing about you Emma is the person that I saw when you were 14 at church a couple rows in front of me is the person that I sit across today as a how old are you 24 24 10 years later yeah a grown woman married about to have a baby and it's that same joy it's that same spirit about you it's the same faith and i think that like so many people go through these like spiritual highs um they go to a conference and it's like oh now i'm gonna like dive into the word or they go to um you know a camp now i'm gonna get into a routine or they read a book and they kind of get on fire they listen to a podcast and it was great for a moment but the things dwindle and they die out and Mm -hmm. you know you look back later and you go i wish i had that joy that I had for those couple weeks or I wish I was that kind of fire that I used to have. Um, So throughout the past 10 years, I'm not saying that you haven't gone through seasons and changes and ups and downs and all the things because our life looks like that, you know? But what do you think it is that has not been the spiritual high, but it's Mm -hmm. really been like a true life change of who you are? Do you think it is that knowing him, uh, the way that you that you got to know him, like what's carried you through 10 years of having the same joy and that same childlike faith? Yeah, I I was reading, I've been in the Old Testament lately and I was reading, I think it was in like Deuteronomy. So it's right before Judges, which we know that it gets to a big old hot mess. And it talks about how the leaders were personally experiencing what the Lord was doing. Hmm. And I think that's one thing I want to come back to it. And the other thing is in 1 John 5, which says that it God is saying, basically, if you love me, you will obey me. Hmm. And my commands are not a burden. So the first wow. thing is, I think that there's something about personally experiencing who God is. Good. So people can hear these words that I'm saying and be encouraged and be fired up because it's like from the Lord. It's from His Word. It's from walking with Him. It's from a genuine place of loving Him. But I can't personally experience it for them. Like it has to be a personal relationship. That's how my dad said, I'm not going to be standing there with you. You can't have Emma's faith. You can't have Jason Jenkins' faith. You can't have Sadie's faith. It's your faith. It's your walk. So there's something that is really enduring about a personal experience with the Lord. Like, I mean, just the fact that like I spent two years just spending time in God's word and getting to know him and being poured into by godly people before things on social media went kaboom and cyberbullying became a big thing. And I was then able to see the authority of God's word in a personal way. Yeah. Because I was having people personally say things about how I looked, things about how I talked, things about what I believed. But I was able to endure yeah. because of my personal experience. It wasn't just words that I had heard in church yeah. on a Sunday or my mom believed, but it was words I had experienced yeah. and I was experiencing the confidence that came from it. Yep. And this kind of ties into it, but what I was saying about First John is those who love me obey me. Mm. Coming back to the routine, like it would have died out when I was 17 because I mean, a routine, it's like you think of the religious leaders. Mm-hmm. They were the most routine people you ever met. It's true. They fasted more than you could have ever seen somebody fast. Yeah. They knew the word frontwards and backwards, like anybody knew the word, yet the Lord was calling out their heart because they didn't actually love Him. So it's like my routine endures, and yeah, it may change as we'll probably talk about just from season to season, but my commitment to growing in the Lord endures because I love Him. And because I love Him, I want to obey. And what I think is cool too is that like my love for Him isn't dependent on how I feel 
Because yeah. there are some days where I don't feel like getting in the word. Yeah. There are some days where I don't feel like praying. Yeah. There are some days where I don't feel like getting out of my comfort zone and telling somebody that they look good. Like, yeah. There are days where yeah. I just don't feel it. But it goes so much deeper than that. It's like, God, I've personally experienced you. Yeah. And I love you. So I am choosing to walk in obedience. That's and good. That, that's what brings an enduring routine. That's good, Emma. That is so good. I love that. Because I think sometimes people can look at you and they can think, oh, well, that's just her personality. Like mm-hmm. she always is happy. She always feels good. It's like second nature to compliment someone, but it's actually so refreshing to hear you say like, I don't always feel like that because yeah. that is also part of being human. You're not always going to feel like that. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, I love that song gratitude because it, you know, that part of the song where it's like, yes. telling myself, don't you get shy on me? Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to say that to myself sometimes. Or it's like, don't get shy on me. Like, stop. Like you got a lion inside of those songs. Like <laughs> get up and praise the Lord. And sometimes it is yeah. like a get up and praise the Lord because like, you're so grateful for who he is. And mm-hmm. I've just, I'm, I'm loving what you're saying. And to me, you're speaking so direct to me as well because I had this moment my my sister you know does cultivate LA and the girls were asking me how it was some of our friends weren't able to go and I said it was so good I was like if people were looking around in the moment of you know raise your hand if you're coming to the Lord they might have been confused because I was raising both of my (laughs) hands and I said I just had such a moment like where you know I just I just finished reading this book and it was um it was literally a 10 and a half hour audio book about a guy who was a pastor of an underground church in Romania and him and his wife, it was Richard and Sabina War- Warmbrand. And it was the most, um, it was tragic in the yeah. sense of how bad suffering can be and how horrible just um, the communist run country where religion was not, you know, you can't just freely worship God like that was tragic. But their faith was something that I've never seen before. The beauty mm-hmm. of their faith to endure um, suffering, to endure pain, to endure just um, affliction and hate and all the things that they endured. And I mean, literally prison, they, they would get out of prison and then the next day they'd have people in their house for house church and then they'd get thrown back into prison. And it was just crazy. And Richard like said this prayer one day to God after getting out of prison, after being like tortured to the extreme, like should have died tortured for nine years. He gets out of prison. He's finally back with his wife and his mm-hmm. son. And he says to the Lord in a prayer, God, if there's someone in prison that needs me to be there so that they can know you, then send me back. And um, wow. like he went back and he continued to preach the gospel in prison. And then like all these um, different leaders who were like literally the, the ones torturing him came to Christ. Every single person that came in his um, prison cell came to Christ. Like he brought so many people to Christ. And I just started like thinking to myself, like, what would I do, you know, if that was me, you know, would I be able to endure that? And then, um, so I'm kind of processing that. And then Jill Dasher speaking at Cultivate LA, and she starts talking about an underground church leader in Russia. And she starts reading like the torture that he went through. And then she reads about his son who got tortured because of his father. And um, his father was like, I can't endure like watching my son. Like, I'm just gonna go ahead and basically come out with whatever they were trying to get him to say. And the son said to his father, he was like, no, do not give me the indecency of my father being a coward. Like, I would Mm -hmm. rather you stay faithful to God and let me die than you like, denounce your faith or whatever, renounce your faith. And so the son ended up dying and the father was like, just, I can't believe my son would have that kind of faith. So she tells the story, I just read this book. And then she kind of gives this call to like, you know, you need to know God like that. Like, is God really, is God really the best thing in the world to you? Is he Mm -hmm. really the thing that your heart desires the most? Is he really the thing that comes above all other things in your life? And it's been something I've really been searching my heart about because I'd heard a, um, I heard a sermon by John Mark Comer recently who said, we all have a public faith, a private faith, and a core faith. And your core faith is what you really believe when the things that you love the most are stripped away from you. And I've kind of been searching like, what is my core faith? Like, 
when things have gone wrong in my life, what what's at the core? What's still there? What do I yeah. really believe? And so I'm sitting here at Cultivate LA with both hands in the air with the prayer of, God, I want to know you like that. I want to know you more. I want to know you like Richard Warmbrand knew you to say I would go back to prison. I want to know you like the 14-year-old kid who told his dad, do not turn away from Jesus. I would rather die. Like I want to know yeah. you like Emma knows you and say, even when I don't feel good, God, it's a joy to obey you. And I feel like there have been times in my life where um, like even when I was single, that it felt a little bit easier to know him like that because I had yeah. time. And now as a married person and a mom, I, f I find it harder to like stay in that close relationship with him. Yeah. When I think about it, it's like, well, it's because I'm tired. It's because I'm mm -hmm. distracted. It's because I let every other thing get in the way of my like personal space with him. And so I've just recently been convicted of that and just having this prayer of like, God, I want to get back to like mm -hmm. knowing you, like asking the question of, do you like chocolate? <laughs> like, what do you want to talk about, God? What makes you excited about today? What brings yeah. your heart today like like these questions that i just haven't asked him in a while yeah. and so talking to you is just so cool personally for me right now because of what mm -hmm. i've been thinking about and processing over the past few weeks and yeah. just this fresh um repentant um running back to the father moment of i just want to know you like that um and so just want to mm -hmm. ask you as you've become a wife and as you're about to become a mom what does it look like to know him and to continue to get to know him now, maybe different than it did when you were 14, or does it carry the same vein? Yo, we all know that teamwork makes the dream work, and I have an incredible team. Some members on my team uh, just spend a lot of time behind the scenes, though. You wouldn't know what they're doing, or you wouldn't know it was them doing it, but you guys have probably been impacted by the work that they've done, and so I'm so, so grateful for that. And uh, Stamps.com is certainly even a part of the LO team, if you will. Our team has used it. They've been working for 25 years for Stamps.com, so literally as long as I've been alive, and uh, they just make everything easier for our team and millions of other businesses because who has time to drive across town and stand in line waiting to drop off a package? It's kind of inconvenient, but all you need with Stamps.com is your computer and a printer to turn your office into a post office. Stamps.com will even send you a free skill so that you can get started saving money and time right now. And they offer package pickup through Stamps.com dashboard. No traffic, no lines, no waiting any time of the day or night. So that sounds pretty great, right? Stamps.com automatically shows you the cheapest and fastest shipping options with huge discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And who doesn't love a good discount? So Stamps.com is really amazing. Like I mentioned, Elo has used it. People on my team have just um, loved it because it's made our life so much easier. Also, my parents' company, Duck Commander, has used it as well. Um, it's just really great. Stamps.com smoothly connects with every major marketplace like Etsy and eBay as well. So if you're, you know, trying to start a little side hustle or growing a business, they make it easy to get your products out there quickly. And I know y'all love to hustle and stamps.com makes it easier and simpler for you to do that in a very efficient way. So friends, set your business up for success when you get started today with stamps.com. Sign up with promo code WOE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital skill. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code WOE. So I think one thing that's really cool, it's a prayer I pray all the time, and it's from Ephesians 1. It's when Paul says, I pray that you may have a spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know God better. Mm. And I think that's also something that's really refreshing to hear, that we have just this lifelong joy of getting to know God. It's good. It's like... My husband, I know him so much. He's my best friend. But when we are 40 years into marriage, I'm going to know him much more than I do now two mm. years into marriage. And wow. so thinking about that, I, I hope it encourages people listening because it's like there's no arrival of like, yeah. oh, now I, now I know God. Now I'm yeah. established in my faith and I'm here and now we're just coasting. Yeah. It's like, 
I'm getting to know him every it's day. Good. Like how Peter, he literally says, I pray that you may grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So that's just really encouraging. And with that comes different seasons all throughout your life. So, I mean, I remember when I was single, like, and I had bright neon note cards of scripture all over my room. And I now share a room with a guy. <laughs> so <laughs> I, it doesn't look the same. I don't yeah. have bright pink note cards yeah. all over my room. But what I do is, what I do have is like time set aside in the morning where I go and I sit with the Lord and I spend awesome. time in his word. Yeah. So it's like, it may look different from the yeah. season, but it's like, is it still a priority? And I think something really, like really sweet too, is like having a husband who desires to know God too. Yeah. So it's like, it's both our priorities, yeah. which I think is really special. But I think regardless of what season you're in or what even your marriage looks like, like if I love God, mm -hmm. I'm going to seek God it's good. because I want to know God. It's good. And so, yeah, I don't necessarily have a dance party in my yeah. bedroom with bright pink note cards anymore, but I go in my living room and I sit down and I write out the word and I read yeah. the word and I spend time in prayer because <clears throat> it's still the same God. It's actually matured, you yeah. know, it, like, of course, when you're 14, 15, you do dance parties <laughs> and you had the bright pink neon colors and all the things. And then as a wife, you know, it's sitting in the living room and it's writing and it's doing all these things. And like, I love that, that it's not that it's died out. It's just matured. It's just yeah. changed and, and deepened in certain ways. And mm -hmm. I was um, reading this other book. Uh, I listen to audiobooks a lot. And uh, I was just telling you that I didn't think I was getting much from it, but I <laughs> am getting a lot from it. But there was, it was talking about C.S. Lewis and, and his mm -hmm. life, how it was uh, 12 years before he passed away. He had this revelation of God's grace. And it was like the mm -hmm. first time in his life he really understood the grace of God and it changed like everything for him but the cool thing they were saying is by this point of his life when he had this revelation he had written most all of his books that people read today that they love so much and obviously have grown so many people's faith in God and he had already like loved the Lord of course but he even would say like, oh, I don't, e I didn't even know the love of God mm -hmm. until I got the grace of God. Like until I understood this kind of love, this kind of grace, this forgiveness. Yeah. And he said that one day um, this woman said something about like how, you know, sometimes she struggles with feeling like we're worthy of being forgiven. And he goes, oh, surely you didn't just say that. We're not worthy of being forgiven. He said, <laughs> but we are. And that's the power of God. That's the power yeah. of his grace. It's the beauty of the cross. It's the beauty of Jesus. And it's just this really cool thing that like this grace idea of d just the the beautiful grace that Jesus displays on the cross and offers us forgiveness and then a relationship with the Father, mm -hmm. how that just, that revelation changed his whole life and letters yeah. after that changed the way he wrote, changed the way he taught to people, changed the way he interacted with people. And I love just going back to the beginning of your story that so much of this was founded on grace. Like it was understanding the grace of God mm -hmm. and that the grace of God and understanding the grace didn't lead you to being like, oh, okay, well now I can do whatever I want. And I love of God. No, yeah. the grace of God led you to say, I want to know you deeper because of this. I want to love you more because of this. Mm -hmm. And it and it created a relationship for you with the Lord that is filled with grace, filled with forgiveness, no expectation of being perfect and something that you actually desire. And I think that some people, they hear things like this and they say, well, that sounds awesome, but that sounds like pressure. But mm -hmm. what I love about this from the very beginning of you telling your story is there's no pressure. Yeah. There's no pressure in your relationship with God. This yeah. is what you desire because this is what is good. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really refreshing because I think that whenever you look at um, Christianity as something that brings pressure to your life, that's whenever you don't want to get up and read. Mm -hmm. You do not want to you know, go to church. You don't want to do so the checkbox things because you're like, this is just another thing in my life. But when it comes out of the revelation of grace and love and the gospel and who he is, yeah. there's such a desire for more. It's and so it's taking you 10 years, it'll take you the rest of your life. I mean, we both have generations of faith ahead of us and so cool to see. I mean, my grandpa, they're making a movie about Peppa Phil's life right now. And oh, it's just wow. really cool um, because his story is wild, like big story yeah. of transformation and forgiveness. And 
God's grace showing up. But what's really cool is like here he is now. He's 75, 76 years old. And, you know, in all of these interviews he's doing, mm-hmm. he's preaching about Jesus and baptism and God's grace and all of these things. Well, now that they're doing this movie, they've dug up like so many old videos of him and they have a video of him when he's like 30 years old. And he's saying like the exact same thing that he's saying now at 76 years old. Wow. And you think about that, just like how many years that's been. I mean, nearly 50 years of preaching the same message that radically transformed his life then and radically continues to transform his life today. Mm. And that just makes me excited that yeah. I'm a part of a hope that lasts forever. Mm-hmm. That's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what a like great thing to be confident in, in a world that's for like changing so fast, changing yeah. by the scroll. But to be locked in on a hope that lasts forever is like super huge. So I gotta ask you, you're about to become a mom, which is a big deal. It's no small thing. What are some things that you're thinking about as you're thinking about bringing a kid into the world? Because people tell me, Sonia, you're scared to have kids in the world, it's Mm -hmm. so dark. And you know, I always say, I'm raising image bearers. I'm I'm raising the light of the world. Like we need more truth bearers. We need more people to come in the next generation and be leaders. And that's not to put pressure on my kids, but that's what I'm praying for my kids, Mm -hmm. that they would love God like that and that they would be the light of the world. What are, when you think about your kid and you think about the times you're in, what makes you excited to bring a kid into the world this time? Oh my gosh, Uh, there are so many things. I think one thing that has come when the just the preparation leading up to having this baby is I've noticed this theme throughout scripture. Um, I've been reading a lot of Psalms and something that I've noticed is trusting God is how I combat fear. Hmm. So just speaking to that posture of I'm so afraid of bringing a child into this world and all the things that they may have to face all the things that we're walking through in our culture. Um, like, is that the best move? Am I capable? All of these things that we can have going on in our mind, just stepping into the unfamiliar mm-hmm. as well. I've just read so many Psalms of David where he's like, enemies are surrounding me. Enemies are planning to attack me, but I will not be afraid. I will put my trust in God. And he's like, my God is my light and my salvation. Why should I be afraid? Enemies are surrounding me, but God, I put my trust in you. It's, it's like, what I love is that his circumstances gave him great reason to be afraid. Yeah. Like our culture, it you look at it with just our own human eyes and it makes sense that you would be afraid. Of course. It makes sense that insecures, insecurities and doubts would flood your mind. Mm-hmm. But I think what's so cool is that his trust in the Lord, yep. his dependency upon God yep. is what brought him confidence. And so what that shows me as a mom is that wow, I can have the presence of confidence with me no matter what I'm stepping into, no matter how unfamiliar it is, no matter how scary it may look, because though there's lots of things I don't know, there is the reality that I do know my God is with me. And that the God who I'm relying on, like we've been talking about, he is the God whose hope endures. Like it's everlasting, it has no end. And so that i think has brought me so much encouragement getting ready to raise up a child is like yeah i have weaknesses yeah yeah our world is broken but my god is with me and i trust him and it just brings up this like let's go and i now get to raise up children like how great is the joy to know that my children are walking in the truth like i get to like you're saying like raise up people who love God, who know God, yeah. who, who declare that he is their light and their salvation. And and so, yeah, I think just going, there's so many things that just go back to the foundational things that you can just rest in of, God, I, I trust you. It's good. God, you're good. It's good. God, you sent your one and only son to come and die for me. He rose again and through faith in him, I have hope for eternity. I'm I'm running on this all day yeah, long. And so it just brings about this, again, just this joy yeah. and this hope that like, 
I know for a fact that as I raise my child up, showing them who God is, like praying that they have personal experiences yeah. with God, praying that they genuinely love God, so they'll delight in obeying mm-hmm. them. Like they're set to it's be good. like what you're saying, the light of the yes. world. There's a reason we're called the light of the world because we live in a dark one. Yeah, that's so good. I love that so much. And it's just so encouraging and it's true. That's mm-hmm. the thing. It's based on truth. It's not like we're sitting here going, oh yeah, you're like our kids are going to be great. And they got, you know, because the world is awesome. We're being very real. Like the world yeah. is definitely dark and scary and there are reasons to be afraid and there are definitely things that if you let yourself linger a little bit too long in you will be totally anxious and freaked out but then there's also a real reality of truth that we have a true gospel and that we really are called to be the light of the world and that we are capable of doing that because the light of the world lives inside of us and if the light of the world lives inside of us and the darkness has never overcome that light then we're good and so it's like there's a real reality to the darkness and there's a real reality to the light and so I just love that this is not some um, whimsical like oh it's just gonna work out it's like no there's truth um i'm not like this is gonna work out person i'm like let's have a plan for it to work <laughs> out kind of person you know yeah I'm, uh six on the enneagram I'm like we're gonna have a plan for safety a plan for security and the gospel looks like a good plan so my grandpa says you know we're all going six feet under he goes is there if there's another way that you've figured out how to get out of that let me know but as of right now the gospel is the plan <laughs> and that's the best yeah. news that we have and i love it like speaking of this book um with richard and sabina warmbrand so they're being tortured and stuff well they had a 14 year old son at the time talk about living in a scary time yeah. for your kids in a communist country where every day you know the school is telling them that god is not real um that they need to believe in communism over the lord that communism is more powerful than god and they're just like saying all these things and like literally like injecting this into his brain well both of his parents are in prison both of them are getting tortured both of them are getting beaten so it would be really easy for this kid to come out and be like i hate god like yeah. god where were you why are my parents suffering and now now I've figured out my truth like it would be really easy for him to turn like that and when Sabina the wife got out of prison she was so worried like what is he going to think of God what is he going to believe and they start talking and and just his knowledge of the Lord had actually grown so much since they had been in prison it was so cool and it, it said this in the book it said you know what you know, communism tried to throw at him, what the country tried to throw at him, what his peers tried to throw at him, could not overpower the fact that he had two parents who were praying, parents who loved the Lord, who modeled a Christian lifestyle for him. And I just thought, man, that's so hopeful for even the days that we live in that the world's gonna throw ideas at our kids that are going to be in opposition to what we believe is true. They're gonna throw things at our kids that are gonna wanna damage them and wanna get, gonna wanna harm them, that are gonna wanna tell them that God isn't who God says he is. But the most powerful voice in their life and the most powerful testimony they're gonna see is the one in their home from their parents right in front of them, a uh, loving mom, uh, one that stays faithful to the Lord, one that's not perfect, but receives grace and forgiveness and teaches that, one that prays over them and speaks life and encouragement and truth over them. And I just was like, man, that's so cool. Cause I could sit here and I could be worried about what the whole world is doing and what the whole world is showing, honey, or I could be confident in what I'm showing her as a woman of faith and who loves and trusts my God. And it just made me realize like, man, I don't need to put so much emphasis and worry on what the world's doing. I need to like literally look in the mirror and say, what am I doing in my home that's stewarding her life well and and our next baby. And so, man, it's just, it's encouraging to talk to other moms like you. And I'm sure that moms listening are encouraged who've been a little <laughs> bit afraid of just the days we're in and stuff. Um, let's see, lastly, I'm gonna talk to you about, you have so many good things going on. You have a podcast, you've written books, you do so many things. First of all, tell everybody a little bit about your podcast for those who don't listen so we can make sure people go listen. Because if you've been encouraged by this podcast, there are a lot of good things that you have coming your way if you haven't dove into the world of Emma McDaniel. Um, and then also just touch a little bit on what you said the season you're in before we start talking about just the fear of the future, but trusting God in it because I thought that was so good yeah. and the hardship of that, but the beauty of that. Um, but first, tell us a little bit about what you have going on. Yes. So this is a really sweet season. Um, I graduated college in May and I... I think sometimes I hear conversations about post-grad, but I don't think it was until I actually entered post-grad that I was like, whoa. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, finding community 
is different because it's, it's not like you have classes with all these people, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, it's just been an adjustment of just day-to-day rhythm, ministry, full-time, not balancing it with papers and soccer practice. Like yeah. we're just all in. And um, so that has been a really sweet journey and it's been a transition and honestly I've wrestled as I've been just seeking the Lord on okay God like what do you want Mm -hmm. unless you build this house unless you build this ministry then Josh and I are working in vain we want to work on what you are building and so it's honestly been the last six months of like really seeking God on what do you want Mm -hmm. and so that's kind of been like wow, we're stepping into the unknown and now we have this baby coming. We're stepping into the unfamiliar, but God, I I trust you. Mm -hmm. And so I have cried and prayed (laughs) some hard prayers and had some really vulnerable conversations, but I've grown so much in my faith. Like, I think it's cool. Like we're talking so much about that, that like you won't always feel it, but like, God, I love you and I trust you. So I'm coming to you. And even as I don't know everything coming, you're strengthening my faith. You're strengthening my relationships because we're walking through it honestly together. So I'm so excited as we continue the podcast, which is the Have You Heard podcast. So we love it. Um, Yeah, I have some fun projects coming up that I'm excited to eventually share um, and getting to just speak the word with our ministry and pour into people. I have such a heart for helping people personally know God through faith in Jesus and grow in confidence in Him. So I'm really excited about what God has in store. It's awesome. Well, you do it all very well. And from a sister to a sister, (laughs) well done, friend. You're crushing it. And just you you being on this podcast today, I hope it's for everyone out there. I know it will be, but if not for anyone else, it was for me. And I'm so encouraged and strengthened every time I talk to you. Um, I know you've called me at times and said, Sadie, you know, I need help in this area, prayer in this area. And I'm right there with you in the sense that I need to learn from you. I need prayer from you. I'm like, you are teaching me so much as you sit across from me on this couch. And so, friends, I hope that y'all have just grown so much and just knowledge of the word. I I mean, I have just as Emma has so effortlessly just spilled over scripture after scripture over us today. And I just want to remind y'all the reason she can do that is because she knows it. It's because she spent time in it. She's meditated on it. She's set in the presence of God because she has such a desire to know him personally. And that desire to know him personally has uh, really made her become who she is today. This beautiful, amazing woman that is just so filled with joy. And so I just encourage you girls if y'all are listening and you're like she's awesome take it the next step further don't just say emma's awesome like go do that for yourself go open the word of god for yourself i love what her dad said you know at the end of the day when jesus comes back I'm not going to be standing there with you. If it's not going to be standing there with you, your pastor is not going to be standing there with you. It's going to be you. And you want to know that you know him, you know, that you knew him so well. Not that you were perfect, like Emma said, not that you did everything right, not that you did all the routines, but that you knew him because that's what he's after is your heart. And so we love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Send it to a friend if you are encouraged by this word. And we will see you guys soon.